All right, whatever, everybody. This is Stevie Breach. We're hicking it up with the Arizona sweet tea uh, right there for you. little sub story before we kick off the uh, uh, the show tonight. Anybody out there can relate to this who has a girlfriend, who has a wife. Uh, every, while, every once in a while, no matter how much you stress, how much, uh, you know, something means something to you tonight. And then there was uh, more than a few times I dropped the hint that uh, tonight was a big show that I wanted to watch. Impact uh, Wrestling. We got to the uh, Turning Point show, I guess is what this was called. Maybe. I think I might have fucked that up and called it the wrong show. But, um, I don't know. Sat down to watch this show. Nothing was really going on throughout the house. Kids had already all uh, gone to bed. I started the show. She came in. She talked for a little bit. Kept on telling her, like, watch this, watch this. Oh, it's going to be good. Trying to sell this up on how big this is. And uh, she dropped the hint that one of our favorite shows, Nashville, was on. And we needed to watch Nashville. So midway through the first match on this show, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm already basically watching this show on tape because here in California, we don't get Impact Live. Uh, well, at least you know, the people who have cable. I use uh, AT&T. Uh, broadband or or something like that is the name of my cable company, and uh, they we, we lost our uh, our live spike feed, so we watch everything on tape here, I guess. But um, yeah, I had to watch Nashville, come back to watch this show, and uh, I, as I was watching this, I was actually talking on Skype with my good buddy uh, Ravi Salt and Battery Seven Seven, good member of the Click Thirty Clan, and um, he just kept on telling me not to bother, not to bother, not to waste my time. I have been really pumping up TNA. I really love these guys. Really want to stick with them. They treated me right for Bound for Glory. But man, this show honestly sucked. This show was not good. All three matches, a triple triple main event here. You know, this was like as big as WrestleMania. Uh, three big matches that all week long I was thinking about that I really wanted to see. I've been caring a lot more about this show than anything that's going on Raw, Survivor Series, SmackDown. Well, I do really want to see Three Man Band come out as the Freebirds on SmackDown. I'm going to be going out of my way to make sure I watch that tomorrow. But um, all three matches on here uh, let me down. Uh, honestly, uh, starting just going in order, you had uh, Magnus versus uh, uh, Samoa Joe, Falls County Anywhere. And uh, Samoa Joe is, is, is all gunged up. You know, he said that, you know, Ace and Ace was over and he was full out playing at heel. Like he was, you know, you know, ready to fight. He wanted to, he wanted to beat Magnus up, uh, and uh, he didn't want to have this match in the ring. He wanted to start this match in the in the back. You know, uh, Magnus is the guy that I picked to win this whole thing. Magnus won this match. This match sucked for the one reason of some guys just can't brawl. I mean, that's it. I mean, Magnus is a great wrestler when it comes to doing things inside of the ring, but outside of the ring, Magnus is just completely. Non-believable. This was a very, very bad match. I don't even want to talk about this match anymore, is how bad this match was. Uh, one of the best things that I think Impact has been doing lately, uh, two of the biggest things that I've cared more about uh, in wrestling in, in the past few weeks, uh, was when uh, the House of Hardcore uh, Tommy Dreamer promotion. Uh, they, they ran a show up there in New York. Uh, Bully Ray did a stop by, and they filmed an angle for Impact 365, stuff that they put up on the YouTube uh, basically, it's going to be uh, Bully Ray versus Dreamer on one of the one night only pay per views, and they're, you know they're, they're using some good ideas where they're you know cross promoting their brand with a brand that's already working. They're going to a show that uh, they're going to run a show in a building that they've never ran before that Tommy just sold out. So just basically trying to make sure that they can get all the people from that show to come back for the next show, and their show will be a success not only when it runs on TV. Uh, but they're in the building and they can then you'll get double the buys, I guess you can say, by people buying the seats. Um, the, the other thing was last night, uh, I, I noticed it was funny. I did retweet it. It was James Storm taking a picture of himself in a bar saying that he was going to get ready for tomorrow night's show. And when I retweeted it, I thought it was funny. And this morning when I woke up and I saw the story and the story had the video in it and I watched it, I thought it was pretty funny that I fell for it. I, I didn't sit around waiting to see what was going to happen. But basically, Robert Roode went to that bar and kicked the shit out of James Storm. And that video was hysterical. Uh, it, it was uh, real gritty. It was like if me and you was in this bar and we saw this fight going down, we pulled out our, our uh, 
you know, our iPhones and start recording it. Uh, we just nobody was yelling out "World Star." I think is the only difference. You know, "World Star." You hear that in every fight video that you watch on YouTube these days. But um, I thought it was really, really good. Uh, it reminded me a lot of like the Attitude Era stuff where you saw the hardcore brawls in there. At one point, Rude, you know, starts to play pool during the thing, and then he hits the pool cue over the back of James Storm, breaks a bottle over his head, and uh, everybody knows. I loved Beer Money. I love when Beer Money fight even more. Um, I mean, Rude versus Storm is some of the best matches that Team Ace happened in a long time. But this match, honestly, in my mind, wasn't that good. Um, I, the, the finish was horrible. Uh, before the match, Gunner uh, said he was going to have Storm's back uh, in the match. And uh, basically, uh, they're down there uh, in the ring, and they're fighting, and they're hitting with each other with everything uh, but the kitchen sink. And uh, as promised uh, by James Storm, he said that barbed wire was going to be involved in this match. Robert Roode pulled out one of those wood boards with the barbed wire uh, uh, coils wrapped all through it, much uh, famous from the uh, Terry Funk and Mick Foley hardcore matches from back in the day. And Gunner comes running down and throws in the towel, saying that uh, the match is over, Storm can't go anymore. And, you know, basically somebody played arts and crafts all day and made this barbed wire board uh, for no reason, because nobody's going to use it during this match. I found this was pretty stupid. It was pretty much a waste of my time. And um, I was pissed. I mean, Rude vs. Storm, this, this was no way close to their uh, Bound for Glory match from last year. It just... I don't know, I was looking for something that was going to headline WrestleMania, and I got something that would going to be on Superstars next week. I, I don't know how to make a, um, something that goes along with that any better, but um, I don't know. I thought that um, they ran a whole thing where they said that basically, on tonight's show, Abyss was going to fight Joseph Park. Joseph Park showed up for the match, he showed up like he was ready to fight, he wanted to face his brother, he wanted to win the TV title, and uh, basically... Um, I don't know. Bad influence was there. They stole. They stole the show. Any promo from them is going to be really good. Uh, but it was just basically a big time bullying uh, deal where they pushed him around. Uh, they poured blood over his head, trying to get him all fired up and pissed off, trying to expose to everybody in the world that uh, he is abyss. They know it. Everybody knows it. It's just that he doesn't want to admit it. We never got to see abyss. So I don't really know where they're going from here. But uh, something better happen. Uh, real soon. One of the biggest highlights of the whole show was uh, Shark Boy coming out. Had a match with EC3. EC3 got the win. Surprise there. And then in the main event, we had Mr. Anderson going up against Bully Ray in the No DQ match. Uh, you know, Mr. Anderson did get the win. Uh, in this, uh, he did uh, take out Nux. Um, I guess last week counted as him taking out Bischoff. And uh, when he did beat up Bischoff, he took off the uh, Ace and Eights colors, and that was supposed to signify, you know, them being not in the group anymore. So Ace and Eights, 18th uh, or 18th month run, you know, being the leaders, uh, taking over TNA is now done. Bully Ray will no longer have the services of his minions. So I'm guessing that no more Nux, no more Bischoff. I'm hoping that maybe they can sit for a month, maybe Bischoff can come back in a tag team. Um, and, um... Uh, with Briscoe, and, uh, you know, Nux is a real nice dude. He was one of the nicest guys uh, that I met the whole Bound for Glory weekend. I would love to see him uh, get a job and be back inside that company somehow. But um, the way this match ended was fucking stupid. Uh, basically, Brooke ran up, and she um, got the hammer from Taz at the announce table, and she went to chuck it in the ring to Bullet Ray, but she threw this ball, <laughs> not even the ball, she threw the hammer way over the head. I mean, like, she threw a hammer like she's never thrown it before. It was a perfect pass all the way to Mr. Anderson. Anderson knocked him over the head, and uh, he got the win. And then, uh, the, I thought it was stupid. Like, the whole, before this match uh, started, the, 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 basically the TNA roster came out on the stage. And, you know, basically, like I said, at the beginning of this match, he had uh, um, Samoa Joe and you had Magnus, and, and, and Joe wanted to fight, you know, I guess this goes along with the uh, promo that he did where he said, you know, the uh, main event mafia made better uh, 
uh, foes than they did friends, and that, you know, he was going to be seeing these guys soon, and they needed to watch out for him, and that he was going to beat them. And then basically, Angle got in a fight with Rude, they needed the wrestlers to come out and break this up, and Joe was standing right by the, sa the side of uh, Kurt Angle, telling him to cool down and calm down, and everything was fine, and they were friends again. And, well, not even an hour after their match, they're standing on the ramp, Magnus and Joe, just hanging out up there, watching the match. Even uh, Daniels and Kaz came out, and they were standing there with uh, the other guys, and they don't really mix well with anybody, but they wanted to mix well for this match. I have no clue. But Nux comes down, he interferes in this match, and he's getting involved in it with Anderson. You got eight dudes standing up on the top of the ramp watching this, and nobody cared. Nobody did anything. It was like they just wanted to see the show, but they didn't want to do anything. It's the same thing that uh, Ace and Eights, why they were so able to run over everybody in TNA, is that TNA, nobody wanted to help anybody. That was why the main event mafia supposedly got formed, because during the uh, the match, um, Bully Ray and Sting, nobody wanted to get in there. Nobody wanted to help anybody. And uh, they got to run buckshot over anybody. But I guess Ace and Eights is now dead. And uh, hopefully you can run over to Shop TNA with their Black Friday sale. Pick up a shirt, because it's the shirt that you're going to wish you had. Buy a, buy, buy a sweatshirt, buy a bandana, buy some gloves and a mask. Um, if this is the end that we see a Bischoff and uh, and Nux and uh, all those guys. Um, I knew you were going to be on the roof, yeah, yeah. I knew it. Um, but... Um, uh, you know, that was it, but this show is bad, next week's Thanksgiving, this man, it'll record, it'll be on my DVR, mm. honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna watch this, um, but if I do, it's gonna be like a Survivor Series match, they're just straight up ripping them off, and, um, pretty dumb, <laughs> you yeah. know, peace out.